Yes, we're good. Okay. Okay. All right. Good evening, everyone. We need a motion to or well, first, are there any changes to the agenda? Back? There are no changes to the agenda, but Dr. McCune and uh, Mr. Early are excused. Um, and there are no changes to the agenda. So we need a motion to approve the agenda. Motion. Second. Motion by Barb, second by Sue. Are there any questions? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain? <laughs> motion carried. And our presentations, our capital project update. It's going to lead us on that. We'll turn it over to Michelle Miller from Turner and Mr. Uh, Miller, no relation, uh, will share the screen capability so uh, Michelle can start the presentation. I think you're good to go, Michelle. Okay, can you guys see my monitor? Uh, we can't see your screen yet. Can you see it now? Yes. Yep. Yep. Okay, um, tonight you have myself, um, Max joined us, um, Sakura, as well as Jim Templeton. Julian was unable to make it. So um, Jim and I will be presenting tonight. So we've changed up our cover photo here in our introduction, um, courtesy of Levi. These photos were drone photos taken by the district um, early last week. So first we're going to go through a phase one update. So phase so one, we have items that are comp under completion this summer, although the work's not as heavy as last summer, like the STEAM edition and the um, SNCC office edition we had last summer. This summer, our main piece that we're, um, the contractors are working on is the high school main parking lot. We're showing a completion date here of 831. With an early start, that completion date will be approved, improved upon. They uh, will give us an updated schedule with a new completion date. They are starting work June 1st in lieu of June 29th. You'll see that um, high school parking lot get underway next week. They actually already started. You'll see the new sidewalks and curbing that was started back in April. And they continued on to early May. Had some early progress on that piece. In addition to that, um, there's change work being performed at the secured high school vestibule. So right now when you come into that main um, vestibule there, you turn right and there will be a new secured vestibule similar to Seneca once you go through that door. It may look like right now that the area is sitting a little stagnant. They are waiting for some delivery of materials as you know this change was released a few, I think about two months ago. So we have some mechanical materials that are on order still but they have started to um, work on the progress of that space. Corrective actions, punch list items. Since the last meeting, we have added about, about 40 items or 658 corrective action observations and punch list items. Total remaining open is 37. There's an uptick there because we had um, a couple punch list takes place at the multi-purpose, the district walkthrough, the architect, and also the kitchen, kitchen consultant walked through about two weeks ago and had a list of items. The contractors will progress on that punch list over the month of June here. The main parking lot work, you know, we have listed for June activities, it'll be June and July. And then interior door modifications. There are some doors that are not of handicap accessible with that the frames are being switched out. I believe there's five total doors. They started working on those today. Any questions for phase one at the high school or Seneca? No. Phase two would be Prospect Elementary. And then we have Jim go through schedule here and give an update. And we will actually, sorry, the photo. I know you guys have seen the STEAM edition on phase one. Um, this is actually the completion of the snow guard system. I don't know if you remember the falling ice issue we had. And there was a change issued to the contractor to add the snow guard system to stop that. We also finished, the contractor finished the gutter on the steam addition, was waiting for those to be installed. So that was actually what was in that photo over at the back of the steam addition. But that I'll hand it over to Jim to speak to phase two of the project. Okay, hi everyone. Uh, phase two prospect. As you can see with the photos on the right hand side, we've got some uh, exciting 
construction happening right now. Uh, milestone dates at the top of, of the list. Uh, right now we're heavy into the kitchen and serving area renovations, both in the addition area and the renovation space. And everything for the project as a whole is still tracking for uh, August, end of August completion date, substantial completion. The corrective action and punch list items for this month, they really haven't ticked up that much with the nature of the work that we're doing. We usually don't see many of those items populate in the demolition type stage that we're in. Uh, so right now with June in the library space, if anyone's been over there, uh, that the majority of that space that doesn't have to do with structural modifications is progressing really well. The drywall finish will be completing this this week with paint happening on Monday. And then ceiling grid and MEPs and all that will follow that work in the month of June. In the kitchen and serving area, the demolition uh, will be wrapping up this week. There's uh, some tile mud set that they're removing right now. And then at the end of the week, they'll be taking down the brick wall between the addition area and the renovation area to make that all one space. After that happens, then in that space, all the wall framing and MEP rough-in can begin. So some other activities that are going on with um, the school being out and adva advancing you know, schedule where we can. You'll see this large uh, rooftop unit. It's the middle picture on the right hand side. That in conjunction with the photo at the bottom of the screen, which is the chiller, those two pieces of equipment work in unison to provide chilled water for all the new uh, cooling equipment. <coughs> um, so it's exciting to see that on site and ready to get put into place. So the mechanical contractor is just working on getting structural steel uh, in place for those units and roof openings prepped. And then, you know, later in likely July when some of the larger rooftop units for the gym show up, uh, those units will all go into place. But they have been able to set some of the smaller rooftop units that we wouldn't have been able to until the end of the school year. And then um, just items of note at the bottom, the, the kitchen renovation area has, has been um, a little bit of a struggle with unforeseen. You know, we've gone over a lot of the abatement that has been found that was unforeseen. And then um, also some of this mud set demo that we're getting into, uh, just the condition that it was in uh, more so than what it actually is. So. Right now, we have a current projected finish of September 4th of 2020. For that so to prove upon that finish date, because the start of school we are well aware of is September 1st, um, when it makes sense, we are um, contacting the district to get overtime, or sorry, the premium portion of overtime um, authorized for contractors to work, you know, longer shifts or Saturdays where that makes sense. And we've been able to um, work the last two Saturdays with the demolition contractor to progress some of those additional items, specifically the abatement and the unforeseen um, loose mud set that was underneath the um, kitchen quarry tile. Are there any questions on phase two? I have one, but I think it's more of a Karen question. Um, I was just curious to know what happened with our contract for um, the portable kitchen. We had to, they had up through May. Um, Okay. Everybody hear that? Michelle, did you hear that? The um the kitchen what sorry, she was hard to hear, but the, the kitchen was sent back, but you did have to spend the money to pay for 
the modular kitchen for the months we thought that there would be school. Again, the COVID expense. What is our microphone? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, I can hear Carrie, but Karen was a little distance. I don't know if it's different positioning in the room. Any other questions? Okay. Oops. Um, so phase 3.1, this is the Seneca parking lot out um, back near the new Seneca office in the high school re-roof area. The roof is being replaced over the two high school wings and there's a small section that runs across the front of the building above the offices for the high school. So um, milestones for concrete curb and sidewalks. Um, next week, we anticipate Monday that um, concrete curb and sidewalk will start and finish by the end of the week. Asphalt top coat and striping the week of 619. And then substantial um, work, sorry, completion of work in 73. I know there's a lot of questions surrounding um, the finish of that parking lot. The district was hoping to get a little bit earlier. We did speak to the contractor and you know they said on 7-3 they would be able to turn that parking lot over. The only real constraint is they want to make sure nobody um, drives on the asphalt for 10 days after it's placed. On um, the roofing project, we have a substantial complete of 918 here. All the roofing replacement itself was scheduled to be completed in August with some of the metal trim work going into September. That contractor is scheduled to start on a week from, sorry, yesterday, this coming Monday. And they're out coming out Thursday to do a site walk and go over logistics. So they are getting started about 29 days or 29 calendar days, I should say, early. Um, so four weeks early, their new schedule, antici we anticipate an end of August completion. And that not going into September with a picked up month. Did not mean to have that happen. Um, corrective action punch list items to date. And um, we've actually had a few more since we had this on here, but total corrective actions was one, and this is in the parking lot. And then totally quality conforming, we've had three. And there's no open ones currently. So uh, June work activities. Um, in the month of June, I did go over the concrete, the subbase, and the paving. Um, but the roofing area, they'll specifically start on the front of the building along the bus loop. And after that, they'll progress down the east wing, which is the staging yard side of the building. Are there any questions on phase, sorry, 3.1 before I leave it? Michelle, it's Bob. Can you yeah. just clarify the Seneca parking lot? Uh, work will be done on the third. Yep. We will not be able to drive on it until the 13th? Nope. Um, it, as long as, sorry, 10 days prior to the 3rd, so the parking lot um, sits there for 10 days. They're worried about, you know, cranking the wheels. We'll usually put marks on the parking lot. That That is done. And then the following week should be able to park on the 3rd. So if they're paving the 19th, 10 days after that okay. would be the 29th. Sorry, that's a little bit unclear there. Nope, nope, nope. Just trying to clarify. So, we yep, so hoping originally we on July third. Okay, good. Thank you. Phase three point two, Cuts Park. Um, this is actually very fast changing here. <laughs> Some of the pictures we have here, real quick. I'll go over on the right there. You can see your existing building. They completed the demolition early this morning in that building and we've started underground plumbing. And then here you're actually looking down towards the back of the park or towards front. They were actually, this was early last week, installing um, storm. The storm is complete in this area of the park and they actually have poured foundations and they were forming the walls on building B, we call it, which is your new concession and team room this, as of this morning. I expect to pour those foundation walls next Monday. Significant milestones um, coming up in the next month are the underground site um, utilities completing by July 2nd. So over the month of July, sorry, June, they'll be working through site electric 
and um, site water, or sorry, water and sanitary. And oh, I apologize there. Um, corrective action punch list items, we are coming out of, there's a few more here than there was when we produced this last week. We're coming out of that demolition phase where we wouldn't have had um, too many quality of correction act action items. You'll start to see this tick up over the next couple of meetings as we put work in place. June work activities, building A, which is your existing building, is the underground utility and slab replacement. So the slab replacements in the areas where we're breaking up the slab to install the new um, sanitary and water. Building B, um, foundations and underground MEPs as well as slab on grade will progress throughout June. Site work, again, we'll continue those underground utilities. And then we will also this month, um, the contractor will install scoreboard and light foundations, as well as a perimeter um, curb for the turf. Any questions on Betts Park? Any of the activities taking place, schedule? We have turf, uh, great question. We have turf samples behind us for the board to review. I would just suggest that um, as the as today or in the next few days to take a look at those turf samples outside in natural sunlight um, so that you can have a better natural freedom uh, of the colors and the turf. Uh, obviously it doesn't have the turf infill, but we have a section of the padding for the multi-purpose field. Uh, in there and some suggestions of the main color schemes for the field, the ball field, uh, the end zones, the out of bounds lines, the soccer lines, um, and a little bit And just a reminder that Bob Rick was looking, Rick is from ATURF, he's the prime contractor doing the turf installation. Um, for decisions by the end of May to be able to keep that material on time. So let us know so if there's no I couldn't hear it. Hear it. Was Sorry, we'll get, it to, we'll get it to Rick this week. Okay, if there's any additional questions, let us know and we'll get them over to him. Okay, okay. Um, that's all we have for the capital project, project presentation. Any other additional questions? Yeah, can you give us a slide? First slide, Michelle. Let me try, let me try. Michelle, slide. Oh. I we just got the room froze. Try again. Bob, it's really hard to hear you. I heard Michelle okay. slide. That's about it. Michelle, can you go to slide one? Just give me one second and I'll get the slide. <laughs> Explain what those drainage structures are in the field. Um, yeah, the, let's look at right there. Is that yeah, going to be right on the playing surface? What's that? Is that under a playing surface? Correct, it Correct. is. You can actually see the outline. There's some here. Here, I hope you guys can see my mouse moving. Yep. Over here, I believe there's another set, definitely that gets installed here. And then I think there's another set here without looking at the drawing. Those are underground storage chambers. So they, um, the water infiltrates into them and filters back out. Those are under the playing field. You, if you drove by on Broad Street for a while, you could see there were big U-shaped um, yellow 
plastic, I don't know, pipe it might look like, or half pipe that was stacked in front of the fence there, and that was those chambers. So where is that first one going to be located? Is that in the outfield or the baseball field? Yeah, so if you, I'm trying to think, because I was just over there chain, they had it all staked. Your home plate is actually back, so there's these trees here that remain. Your press box about there, and your home plate's in here. So yeah, that's in the outfield. And then the, the upper one where your pointer is. That was, that was, I'd have to pull up the drawing um, to tell you where that is, but the other playing field is in here. Okay. Now, playing surface, does that have anything whatsoever on the playing surface? What's it? Effect that, Michelle, does that have an impact on the playing surface? And Michelle, do you have a better microphone for us? I don't know. I'm talking right a couple of feet from, or not even a couple of feet, maybe 12 inches from my laptop. Can you hear me now? Yes. We can hear you perfectly. Okay. Oh, better than microphone for yourself at the meeting, were you saying? Um, this, you'd have to, Hunt would have to speak to the design aspects of the field. Okay, we can, we can talk with uh, Jeff and Luke uh, and have them uh, report out next, uh, next week's meeting if there's specific. Yep, and I can give you, what we can give you is um, I can look up afterwards and tell you what the cut section is and the depth, you know, the actual amount of fill that goes over this and turf. I can tell you how deep the top of those are under and what the coverage is. Yeah, commonly, this is Matt. Commonly, those are placed under the playing surface because real estate is so um, pristine and that's done to save space, but it's also designed to carry traffic and load above it. Um, and Hunt can report out what those weights are and what that field will be able to support, but it will not have any effect on how the game is played or how the field plays. Okay. Is there any type of warranty for settling? You have a special inspections um, contractor who is under direct contract with Salamanca Central Schools, and they are taking the necessary um, bearing pressures and compaction uh, inspections by the required lifts that are in the specification. All that information is reported out in their uh, inspection report. So we will track and monitor any deficiencies and make sure they're corrected. That is the guarantee that you have that it's done properly. It's a third party inspection direct to Salamanca. Okay, what's the length of the warranty term? For the turf itself is, I believe it's 12 years here, Michelle. It's longer than the eight, right? Yeah, off the top of my head, it's 12 years here. I, I mean, specifically for any kind of settling that might occur. What, what's our recourse um, if it happens in a couple of years? So, Carrie, you bring up a valid point, which has happened on a couple different projects across Western New York. Um, you, to answer your question first, the warranty on the settling, that falls under the contractor's one-year warranty. So it's important that those inspections are managed properly. They're documented. Our team just had a, a conference call earlier today specifically regarding the process of inspections, where they're stored, how they're handled, who gets them to make sure that everyone's aware of what's going on as it's being built. Okay. So who's gonna oversee that on our? Matt and Michelle, who's um, who is the point person in the district that does that? Is that uh, Rich Pankowski, or is that still Turner because you'll still be on site? Correct. We manage that for the district, but the district is copying on those reports. 
I'll double check on Rich. Bob, I know you're copied on them. They're the Terracon ones that you love getting that come through your email. <laughs> um, but so you're copied. I can make sure Rich is copied on those reports. The deficiencies, um, we do log those into Procore as one of our observations. Does they come up? Okay, thank you. That's okay. done to make sure they get corrected before the contractor moves on. What happens in four years, we have to settle it more on the book for it. It's at our expense this time. Yeah. I mean, I understand why we have drainage structures, but I just have no idea they're actually going to be under directly under our plane surface, which concerns me a little I think you'd because want to get in a conversation with HUT on that. It can happen. Settling can happen. We'll, uh, at our next owner's meeting, we'll talk with the architects about uh, that concern and get a better answer. Uh, and if we're going to have them here next week, uh, if there's questions, then we can um, get an answer for next week. Okay. So are there other options of getting the drainage moved? That's Not at this point. point right? <laughs> you're, you're, we're you're, stuck. I mean, you're talking tens of thousands of dollars if you want to do something else. That's kind of what it means. Yeah. Six if, give you a, if I could just weigh in, um, just your neighbor up the road, you asked for options, Teresa. The other option is people cut in a detainage pond like you see at the new Lowe's or um, any new construction area where they manage the stormwater runoff on a school district because it's so um, valuable, the flat playing surface. Cataraugus didn't want to take it up as a they called it the swamp. So they actually put theirs beneath the grass baseball field that they have there out behind the school. Um, Carrie brings up a good point about the settling. It, it is not that out of the realm that that may happen. Um, and I know for some, it, the carpet is picked up, it's regraded, and the carpet is reinstalled. And at the districts that that happened to, um, that was done under the warranty condition because the turf manufacturer has to accept the substrate before he's allowed to put the turf down. So you're saying that the the subgrade falls under that 12 year manufacturer warranty? The carpet only does. The carpet. But well, explain what you just said again. So on the districts that had settlement, um, the one specifically was a conduit that was cut in after the bulk backfill was done across the field for a com box that the owner wanted to add. And there was settling in the line of the trench. And so that carpet was pulled up, that grade was adjusted and filled and the carpet was put back down the carpet was removed and put in by the turf manufacturer. So there's no issues with tearing or, you know, it's just not a site contractor going out there to cut it open and make the fix. All the relevant parties are brought back to correct their portions of the work or perform the corrections at the cost of the contractor who had a deficiency. But you stated that the contractor only has a one year warranty on this. So what happens if it happens 367 days after the install, after the acceptance? I'd ask you to consult your attorney. Thank you, that was the answer I was looking for. <laughs> the bond carries the warranty period, but this particular scope of work is excavation and backfill that would be deficient. And I don't know that to have a longer than a one year warranty on on their work. Okay, I'm fine. Just means we're on the hook for after a year, right? That's all. Okay. Are there any other questions? No. Thank you, Michelle, Jim, and Matt. We appreciate you. it. Rob, do I need to turn anything back over to you or can I just leave? 
You can leave. Okay. Thanks. You're welcome. Have a good evening, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So we can go to the central office message. Yes, uh, really just a continued thank you to our staff members, um, teachers, staff across the board for the great job that they're doing on a daily basis. Um, that's it. Karen? I have nothing. Karen has nothing. <laughs> Got nothing. I have nothing. All right. And we can go to board message. Sue, do you want to start? I have really nothing at this point. Barb? Okay. Um, also, thank everybody. I don't think we can say it enough. Good job. Yep. Okay. Likewise. Well, thank you. Thanks to all the staff and for all their hard work and the help our students. I, I've been driving around to get flowers at various places, and I see a lot of the Charlie Cow and I get Harold. Yeah. They do look nice. Now I want to know who lives there, though. <laughs> <laughs> Go knock on the door. No. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Give it a six foot four. Yeah. <laughs> Ring the doorbell. Uh, Carrie. Um. Yeah. I, I want to thank all of our teachers, administrators, staff, other board members, everybody for you know everything we've been doing this school year. Um. Not how we wanted to end. Disappointing on many levels, but. There's always still hope for the future, you know. And right now, school's not over. We still got a couple weeks to go. Um, just want to encourage all the parents, the kids, you know, everybody. <coughs> just try your best. Do your best for the next couple weeks. Let's finish strong. Um, again, thank you, everybody. Also, I just want to say that uh, I know that all of our thoughts and you know, well wishes are with the family of Cindy Moore, uh, longtime teacher here, very well respected and loved community member. And the district did share um, a website link. Uh, the family is asking for help. They're asking for prayers. Uh, they're just looking for anything and everything anyone can do for them at this time. They're, they're in not a very good situation. But just wanted to let everyone know that we are thinking of them. It's up. Usually that's not my problem. I just want you to know that. Um, I agree with what Carrie and the rest of the board members said. Thank you again to everybody that's um, still teaching the classes and getting the education materials out to all the kids and the meals and um, just the support of the community and the staff, everyone for our kids, all of our kids. It's really uh, heartfelt. I know. I was speaking to a parent whose student goes to another district and they were saying how their district wasn't doing things that we are for our kids. So it's good to hear that we are stepping up and that we're going above and beyond. Uh, makes me proud. I'm proud to be from Salamanca. Um, I, I want to reiterate what Carrie said that our thoughts and prayers are with Cindy. Uh, more in her family. Um, they lost Cindy's mom to COVID, um, and Cindy's mom was a very, she, used, she was a former clerk at the nation. She was a judge, um, you know, very respected elder. Uh, so it's a big loss for the Seneca Nation and the community because she was such a, a great influence over everybody that whose lives she touched. Um, and Cindy is still in the hospital, along with Diane, her sister, and they're both on ventilators, and they're, they're both really fighting for their lives. So any prayers and thoughts that we can send their way is what, what we're trying to do. Um, and then the last thing is I was contacted by NISBA today, and uh, they asked me if I would um, say a few words that for something that they're preparing for their seniors. So I thought, oh, that was really nice. So I get to be the voice for the, the Buffalo Legion. So <laughs> I told Bob I'm starting to become famous. So, <laughs> you know. You've been famous. More That's famous. what he said. More famous. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> infamous. There you go, Dale. Watch out. So uh, I'll turn it over to Bob. 
Okay, uh, I have a number of items. I'll try to keep it brief. Um, so by now, um, uh, I'm trusting and hoping that uh, the community is aware that the last day for students and staff will be June 12th with a dismissal of students by 10 a.m. Um, this uh, is consistent with the traditional end of the school year time frame. Uh, not the last day, obviously, but the time frame is consistent. Staff will be dismissed by the principals and supervisors on the 12th, uh, shortly thereafter. Details will be forthcoming from each building principal and it will be fairly consistent among each of the three buildings. Um, our tech team and our principals are coordinating a material delivery. Our last delivery of instruction will occur by June 2nd. And then shortly after the June 12th uh, end of the school year, collection will begin in orchestrated waves of devices and materials and textbooks. Uh, the items collected uh, will be inventoried and is necessary updated by the IT staff and then returned to students who are requiring summer programming. The staff will keep their computers and devices and will have a separate collection schedule for the teachers so their devices can be updated over the summer. I want to thank the tech staff and the building principals for their monumental efforts. Uh, this is uh, not, as Carrie said, the way that we envisioned it, but we will, like warriors, make the best of it. Our summer sessions for students needing summer programming will not be in person. They will rather be remotely uh, as required by the governor's order. Students that are requiring summer programming will still be able to receive their services remotely and we'll make sure that they're prioritized to get or keep their devices as uh, accordingly necessary. Building principals once again are facilitating those needs and those lists and we thank them for that. Um, I see Mrs. Dudek is on the call. I want to thank Mrs. Dudek for helping to facilitate the mandated IEP programming options for students over the summer. Um, we thank her and our special education staff for uh, continuing to provide services to our students at great, greatest risk. Um, our summer staff development and professional development will continue. Uh, it will look differently as we transition to remote uh, PD services for staff. And we're hoping and optimistic they will have some in-person professional development in accordance with the latest guidelines from the CDC and the governor and the county health department. This is still a work in progress, but we will still have a robust, ample, and aggressive professional development offerings for our staff and our employees. I want to thank uh, Mrs. Beatty, who is our uh, director of staff development for coordinating this. Uh, we anticipate thousands of hours of staff professional development over the summer, and we hope soon to have this be in person. Uh, we do anticipate our 12-month staff. We've started to have conversations about our 12-month staff returning to more normalized hours uh, in our reopening plan. Our reopening plan will be congruent with the executive orders, health protocols, including social distancing, use of masks, temperature checks, and we will be getting this information out to our 12-month staff uh, shortly to make sure that they're aware of our eventual transition back to regular summer hours for our 12-month staff. Uh, as um, expressed from Teresa, we are working on our end of the year graduation planning, messaging, and Mr. Siebert, uh, Dr. Beeler, Mr. Haley are working uh, with our graduation team. Uh, the next update on graduation will come from Mr. Siebert. I'm gonna stay out of it and just show up and give my speech. And I think that's a, a good recipe. The superintendent should not be there except to not announce the names. And this is a celebration for students and this will be very student centered. And we're looking forward to those plans coming up in the very near future. Um, I would also like to echo the comments about Cindy Moore's families, her thoughts. Uh, our thoughts and prayers are with her family as they deal with these struggles, as well as everyone who's dealing with all of these complex personal and emotional issues dealing with the virus or other struggles that folks may have as a result of this uh, illness that uh, is, has changed our landscape and our life. Um, I, I just would like to share a thought with Cindy uh, just about on the last day she worked before she retired. She told me that she loved every minute of teaching and considered Salamanca her home and her family 
And I think there's no truer word spoken by a warrior than Cindy's. And uh, we're wishing her and her sister a speedy recovery and her entire family with her mom's passing her and our hopes, thoughts, and prayers during this very difficult time. Um, on a significantly less um, significant issue, ballots are out for the budget uh, and the referendums. Uh, and we would encourage all community members to return their ballots if you've not received one and to have not heard of an individual not receiving a ballot, um, which is different than other school districts. Uh, please let Janet know in the district clerk's office, 945-2400, extension 4025, and we'll ensure that we get the appropriate uh, absentee ballots to you. Um, today, I spoke with a number of community members. Uh, one in particular, she and I spoke for about 40 minutes about the budget, the propositions, and her concerns about the governor's plan for state aid cuts. I can tell you she was incredibly articulate, well-read, and obviously read our recent call edition cover to cover. And so I appreciate the phone call, and she shared with me some insights from her perspective as a community member, and um, that was greatly appreciated. Um, later on this week or early next week, we plan on shooting and videoing our annual powwow budget presentation. It will look different. It'll probably be a lot shorter, probably not as funny as the kids would have made it, uh, and certainly a little bit rustier uh, without the student support. Uh, and we're looking to get that out to the community in the next few days. And lastly, I think lastly, um, I did receive an inquiry from a member of the class of 1971. Just for the record, that was the year I graduated kindergarten. Um, so uh, they inquired about donating a bench for Betts Park for a member of the class of 1972 who recently passed away after an illness. Um, I will reach out to them and uh, as well as the chief architect, uh, Luke, who's overseeing the environmental designs at Betts Park. And we will find um, a, a suitable bench. And it would be my recommendation that we standardize this so that there's consistency of the benches and we'll look at some options and then talk to the community member. And I think that um, it's a lovely gesture and uh, we can certainly use places to sit along the walking path or in other strategic locations for a permanent bench to honor members of the community. And lastly, as I mentioned, the second last, I apologize, um, I do have turf samples behind me and we can take a look at those for the board members and um, talk about preferences. And I will end this uh, lastly on a personal note, I want to thank the board members, the staff, all of the administration for your kind words, cards, and support over the past uh, couple of days as my family dealt with the death of my father-in-law suddenly and the hospitalization suddenly as well as my mother-in-law, not COVID related, uh, but tragedy hits all of us uh, when we least expect it. And it's the friendship and the camaraderie of close friends and colleagues that makes these difficult days more bearable. The kindness shown to my family is beyond words and I thank you profusely from the bottom of my heart. Thank you. Thanks, Bob. Um, we need a uh, motion to approve the consent agenda. Okay. Motion by Dale. Second. Second by Barb. Are there any questions? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Staying? Motion carried. In our new business, our property uh, report card, property tax report card, we need a motion to approve the school property tax report card. Motion by Dale, second, second by Sue. Are there any questions on this? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? Motion carried. And then we have our uh, board information and reports. Our capital project summary, uh, upcoming events, oh, which is not a lot. <laughs> this is lovely Board of Education meetings. Uh, and then we have a, we need a motion to go into executive session. Um, thank you everybody for coming tonight. Again, if you're a community member, don't forget to turn in your ballots. So we need a motion to go into executive session for the first of contract negotiation. Motion. Motion by Kerry. Second. Second by Sue. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye.
Opposed? Abstain? Motion carries.